Hey, what's going on, guys? Another day here at the house. It's kind of chilling a little bit. The weather's been kind of nice here the past couple of days. I've kind of been enjoying it. Um, we finally got the car off the trailer. It's sitting on the ground now. Ethan had a bright idea. Uh, let's go ahead and start cleaning this thing out. panels or anything. Is that or is any of the Bradley pool? Come in here so, break it. All right, yeah, bring it out and slide it down. Bring it out, then slide it down. Kind of found some creature stuff out there too. And kind of made us leery about getting into the trunk area. So we found this going down the back of the seat, behind the, the back seat. Well, Brad just found this inside of there. So I wonder what's on the trunk once we get the back seat out. Okay, part of it. There's the rest of the snake skin. There's another three, four foot of snake in the seat to get to the trunk. Uh, for the simple fact is we have no keys. Uh, like I said before, the person, the gentleman that owned this had passed away, so nobody knew where the uh, keys were to this thing, but we were able to unlock the trunk. And man, we found a bunch of stuff in that trunk. Uh, we found transmission rebuilt kits. And I believe one of them was for the Studebaker transmission. And the other one looked like someone had tore our tranny apart. And when we were able to get the back seat removed, well, we found a bunch of parts. So it looked like a 350 turbo transmission housing that was tore apart which I say is probably where the clutch and stuff came from in the one thing. Uh, set of 350 heads, crank, I mean, a bunch of rod, uh, connecting rod bolts and stuff like that. Those got put in boxes. Um, the transmission kit, I believe that's for the Studebaker has also been put up. But yeah, it's kind of weird things you find in an old car and you start going into them. But it did our rear end up about two inches. So now the tires aren't, that are on are not rubbing. I also appreciate everybody in the comments that have been suggesting to me places to check out for Studebaker parts. And one guy on there made a comment of there was some company in Tennessee that made a front end conversion kit for these things to run rack pinion and change the uppers and lowers and stuff. It was a bolt on kit. So I reached out to him if he could remember the name of the company that did that, that would work out great. Uh, Cause most likely I was looking at for the upgrade items going to like the, uh, like the Fox bodies, front end type setup with the rack and pinion. I've had a couple guys say convert over to the C4, C6 Corvettes, uh, suspension and stuff. So I'm listening to everybody, but I gotta figure out what's gonna work best for me and uh, we'll see how it goes but i did find a set of fenders for this thing i'm going to have to head out i think this weekend but the bad thing about it was I had paid a little bit for them but there's a whole bunch of other body panel parts 
that come with this. You know, I had to buy the whole lot. And it looks like there's new stuff still in Studebaker boxes. Uh, there's two front fenders. Uh, there's a driver's side quarter panel. Uh, some door seals and a lot of other stuff. Trim. So, but I had to buy the whole thing in a lot. So what we don't use on this build will get put back up online for sale uh, for somebody else that can use it. And But that's a quick update on the car. Like I said, appreciate everybody who's been commenting, digging the build, um, suggesting to find places, parts for this thing. Because that's going to be a big help right there. I was hoping to possibly do a revival on the motor because it's been sitting for God knows how long. And according to the inspection sticker on this thing, I don't know if it'll pick up on the phone or not. Uh, last time this thing had an inspection sticker on it was 1982. But yeah, phone's not gonna pick it up. So, it's been a long time since this car has been on the road. But that's why I was wanting to do, see if I can get this 170 turned over and possibly fire up. Because it's gonna be worth a lot more to someone else that might want it for their Studebaker project if it runs. Well, I tried to turn the motor over the other day by hand, it wouldn't do it. Uh, I got the breaker bar on it. That didn't work. Got the bigger breaker bar with the extension on it. That didn't work. So I didn't want to snap the bolt on the crank. So I ended up pulling all the plugs out of it. To kind of see what was going on. Let me get this light out of the way. And start pulling the plugs out. Saying, okay, they don't look too bad. And they're brittle too because they've been in here for a while. I had a couple of them break on me on the way out. But cylinder four, see if I can find it, was filled up with rust. So I don't know if this thing had a head that cracked on it. Uh, I've read some of the comments that the 170s were bad about doing that. Or if it blew a head gasket. Don't know. It's a mystery. So, I was like, I'll go ahead and soak the cylinders down. Let it sit for a few days. So, I got all kind of stuff in here right now. So anywhere from penetrating oil to WD-40 to a little Marvin mystery oil. But we're going to let it sit, soak in for a little bit. I'm going to try to see if I can break it loose in. If that doesn't work, I don't want to dig too deep in this thing because like I said, we're pulling it out anyway. But if I do get it broke loose, I'll see if I can get it to fire up. But other than that, guys, I'm going to get back at it, and I'll see you down the road. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a little question bubble. We'll see.